What's going on, chess lover? This is um, Maurice Bishop, and today I'm going to show y'all the Black Lion and how the Black Lion can control the whole board. So this is going to be very interesting, y'all. As y'all can see on here, man, I'm like at a 2268. Uh, I've been really like studying my craft, you know, really trying to watch out uh, for my weaknesses and everything, you know, things like that. So I've really been like training hard. So I'm trying to get to that 2300 so far you know so without further ado we're gonna actually um, get started in this game um my opponent played e4 i played d6 um knight c3 knight b to d7 d4 e5 right uh he takes i take back knight gd2 and i kind of figure you know with knight gd2 he probably gonna go maybe uh, f2 to f4 uh i just go c6 and he goes bishop f4 so um Obviously, y'all, uh, I actually pre-moved. Uh, I had already pre-moved to a6 and everything. I didn't realize that he was going to uh, do this bishop f4, but I already pre-moved on a6, so I couldn't hurry up fast enough to to do it. So I was like, all right, no problem. Um, he goes bishop g3. I go knight f6. Uh, he goes f4. Uh, I go knight h5. Now, look at this, y'all. Now, remind you. This is a little bit different and everything because because of this F4 uh, move and the fact that um, he left his stuff kind of open. This is certain. See, this this is when you got to really know your openings and you got to know your tactics. You got to really know the position and everything. So, yes, I wanted to do the whole black line, go to queen C7 and all that. But in a position like this, you really got to know your opening and the whole principles of what you're doing. So it's not just playing... Oh, let me do these move orders. No, you have to really understand the openings and positions and things like that. So I was knowledgeable enough to actually, uh, like I said, I never had this play before, but I went knight h5. The whole point of it is um, this dark square bishop can potentially be uh, an active bishop if it gets to bishop f2 and then maybe bishop b3. Um, but I decided to go knight h5 because I wanted to put uh, more threats on um that dark square bishop because if i get that dark square bishop man his dark square weaknesses is going to be weak which is why i did it um uh, my opponent goes f5 that was a positional mistake because i automatically go knight catcher g3 uh he takes with the um the knight and i go queen c7 and um uh, notice uh he has a backward pawn, so um, this can also be uh, a weakness as well. Um, you know, uh, my pawn structure is looking a little bit better, but this is, he has weaknesses, dark square weaknesses. He has um, weaknesses on the F4 and on the D4. You know, um, these are good posts for me to be at, right? So let's look at this. And plus, on top of that, I do have a dark square bishop. If you get my dark square bishop on these lines, man, it, it's going to be deadly, especially since he don't got a dark square bishop. All right. So he goes bishop c4, I go b5 automatically, uh, bishop b3, I go bishop c5. I got to control all these weaknesses. He can't even castle. Can't even castle right now. And even if he get a chance to castle queen side, I got a nice pawn storm that I could go. So it's, yo, man, it's crazy, y'all. All right, so queen e2, a5, he goes a4, I go b4, right? Uh, and note, and notice this, y'all, with this c6 pawn right here. He can't go to b5 or d5. I'm loving this position right now, y'all. Now, look at this, though. He goes knight d1. Look at this, guys. Um, Just just, just look at it. So, I, I went ahead and went bishop d4. I'm already, like, putting more. The whole point is, I don't want him to castle queen side, right? But even if he does, if he try to create a weakness on c3, I'm automatically, um, I'm automatically take this point automatically and then move my bishop back to uh, c3. Because the whole thing is, if he castles queen side or whatever, he's gonna have all these holes uh, in his um, position. And again, he can't castle on king side because of the dark square weaknesses and everything. Pay attention to y'all, the dark square weaknesses and everything. So I understand position, I understand openings, I understand how your pawn structure is. This is what y'all need to really understand, man. It's not just, uh, let me know the system of the black line and the L-shot system. You need to understand tactics. You need to understand positions, strategic positions, and you need to understand the end games as well, y'all. So just just as food, um, food, um, food for thought for y'all. I got tongue-tied right there. 
Alright, so I go bishop um, d4 and my opponent goes rook b1. Alright, so I go knight c5. Man, y'all. The whole point, man, uh, with knight c5, um, I'm creating uh, weaknesses with him. Um, um, with knight catchers on um, b3, you know what I mean? So um, that's another thing. Uh, and then, like I said, if he moves bishop back, he will mess up by give, um, dropping a pawn because I could attack the pawn on a4. Uh, this is just looking so beautiful for me, man. I'm telling you. My opponent goes knight e3. All right, y'all. Um, I go knight catches b3. He goes um, c catches b3. And I want y'all to figure out um, this move, man. What move? What is the best move for Black? What can Black do? You need to pause the video. Pause the video. I'll let y'all um figure it out for yourself, man. I want y'all to really understand, you know, moves and things, all right? And I was told y'all I got a meeting in like fifteen minutes and everything, so. <laughs> All right, y'all. So if y'all didn't um figure this out, um, Bishop A six is the move. Why is Bishop A six the move? Because we're 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 black, and I mean, look at this, man. We're we attacking the queen, but we are also covering all the light square weaknesses. This becomes so deadly. My opponent goes queen D two. Uh, I go rook D eight. You know, gotta get the rook on the foul and everything. You know, it's looking nice. And plus, not only that, y'all, I'm also threatening. I'm threatening Bishop C3. You know what I mean? Um, the queen wouldn't be able to uh, move out the way because the bishop would be pinning him. And then at the same time, my rook would be hitting this queen. So things like that, right? So my opponent get out of the way with um, queen F, uh, with queen F2. And how, how can y'all put more threats on this, Right? Well, the way to put more threat on this is go queen b6. So now I'm hitting this uh, knight twice. And this knight can't move because of uh, this queen uh, is here. Because I I'm pinning this knight. So this knight can't move. So I'm threatening to take his, um, you know, his knight. So really the only thing that he could defend it with is knight f1. And you, of course y'all already know, this captures f1. Beautiful. Um... Ain't like the knight could take back because again this bishop is still pinning this queen, so I gotta uh do it like that. So bishop catches f1, queen catchers. Oh my bad, y'all. Uh queen catchers f1, bishop catchers um e3, uh, queen b5, and I go bishop d2 check, king f1. Uh I just castle uh king side. Uh probably didn't really need to do that, but the whole point of me castling queen side is I wanted to um double up my rooks as well. So, um, rook d1, uh, I just go, I just go here, man. I just go queen e3. Why not? You know, he tried to go queen uh, e2. I just go queen f4. No problem. Too easy. And then he did a blunder. He goes king uh, king g1. And then after bishop e3, this was all over, y'all. Why is this over? Because the only way he could um, really stop this checkmate is actually taking. And then after I go... Um, Rook catches d1 check. It is nothing he could really do in his position. Because after this, this is checkmate. Yeah, y'all. And then the thing is, I was wondering why he just didn't do... Um, after I went queen f4, I was wondering why he didn't go... Uh, I don't know, like queen f3 or something like that. Uh, I was just wondering about that. Um, not sure why, but... I probably would have just came here. But either way, this would have been a a, a winning position for me either way. Matter of fact, to be honest with y'all, um, yeah, it doesn't matter where I go. Because technically, I can just take. I can just take. And then Bishop F4. It wouldn't really matter because I'm winning this game. So, and my end game will be uh, a lot better. As I say, this is why I say end game. He has two double pawns. He has another double pawn here. Um... You know, I have a another pawn that can potentially be a pass pawn, you know, once I get these weak pawns out the way, you know. So, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I hope y'all got a lot out of it. 
Um, please like, please share, please comment. Let me know what you think of this video. And also, y'all, don't forget to subscribe. All right, y'all. Peace out.